So are you guys ready to try a crackle Oops. finish with me? Wrong thing. Not crackle, cracked. So if you look at Sid Dickens tiles, they are aged and or they are cracked. So this is going to be another aged one that we're going to be doing. But I wanted to think about how I could achieve that crack look. Because theirs are made out of concrete. So we're starting with, this is an IOD gallery blank. It's what I always start with. There's mine. And the way that I want to do that, so here's what I think about when I think about the cracks. I could use embossing medium, but I would have to let it set up till it gets to just the right point, which I don't know what that is yet, before I could do what I'm doing today. And this will make sense to you in a minute. Or I can use air dry clay which is what I'm gonna use. And um, I'm gonna put cracks and character in it that way. Oh, Karen gets to see the, you use the new medium that she just bought. Um, that's, I'm not using that medium today. Oh shoot, what are you using? I'm, I'm, using, I'm using the air drag clay. First time on oh, a Sid Dickinson's that fire tile. Away. Yep. So, um, I'm gonna grab some and I use my brayer Sorry, guys, I just... I'm going to have to roll it out, trim it, and then um, glue it on. So I'm not positive you have to glue it on, but once I did it and it slipped off. I'm put this thing on. Okay, Pam's going to wear my green. All right, so yeah. I'm going to take... I'm doing a thin... You want to think about, like, how thin a crepe is? That's how thin I want this to roll out to be. You already got black paint on this beauty, Lisa. I do? Yeah. I just had it cleaned. Nope, you got some black paint on there. I just want you to know I didn't do it. <laughs> um, could I get a sheet of... Uh, nope, I'm lying. I'll just roll it right on here. Tell me what you want. So what you I'm going really to roll this out. I use an old brayer. You could use um, an IOD brayer. This is just one that I happened to buy before hey, I was in hey, hey, IOD stockist. And so, and I don't think this needs to be perfect. Now, when I remember, I will um, cornstarch or whatever you call it. Well, tell me, what do you, what do you need? Oh, you put, well, so here. that it doesn't stick, but. You want some? No, that's all right. Oh, yeah, maybe. So I'm trying to get it really thin. Can I just put a little bit on your surface? Uh, Is that what you're saying? I want it on my rolling pin. You know, like our moms did when they were yes. baking pies. Did I get enough on there? I don't know. We'll see. Let's see. So let me explain why I'm using this. When I use, and I'm just gonna cut this off at the edges. When I use the embossing medium, it, it stays pretty wet for a while. And I want to get a decent crack. Yeah, <laughs> crack. And I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit. So I needed something that would dry more quickly. I would love to experiment with the embossing medium. So I am going to smooth that out a little bit because I don't want it to be a rough edge. Am I okay, Pam, still? Yes, you are. So I want it to be uneven. I want it to have some character. I'm just smoothing, smoothing it out. This will work. So what I was going to use was this, all right? And you would, I would, I think I would crack from like the mm -hmm. edge. So let's try this. And I'm just going to bring that well, that's, around. That's going all the way through. Yep. So now see how 
how it looks like um, sharp. And I don't think I want it to look sharp like that. So what I'm thinking of doing is taking the edge of this and just kind of smoothing that down. And you know what? I'm not sure it even needs to go all the way through. So I would do that. Then let's say maybe it's coming off from there. Let me try not going all the way through a little bit. I think I like that a little better. So hold on. <laughs> that looked like a good crack. I like that. See how it's not as pronounced? So I'm not going to go all the way through. And then lighten it up a little bit. Um, maybe then it's like along this edge. Debbie has um, a set of nut picks that she used. Oh, you could probably even, yeah. Oh, I didn't think about our orange picky things. So then I just want to smooth it out a little bit. I don't want it to look pronounced. And if you wanted to make it even smoother, you know, I'm just going to use my finger to do that. You could let it dry a little bit and hit it with water. This is a clay tool. So that's just going to give me the cracked look that I want. I think I'm gonna bring this. Like the old tile cracked? Yeah. So now, let's say that I want, like this is still flattened from me. Hot flash. Whew. Oh geez. Let me move this up so I'm not reaching so far. So I'm gonna take my gift card type thing and I'm gonna take it on the edge and I'm just going to flatten that out so I get a little bit oh, I like it. of a trowel look. And then maybe I'll do the same. I don't want it to look like it's parallel at all. You can pull your thing a little more toward you, or, I could, or is that too oh close to you now? I think it's the lights, Pam. Seriously, it's I not know, I'm just my to hot flash. Face. Here, let me see if I can get this out of your face a little bit. So I like that. See how I got some character from that edge right there? So just pressing yes, that in like there. Yes, like a cracked windshield. Yes, Daddy. <laughs> Which we don't want to have. No. So just moving that around. And I, I guess I like how that's kind of bumpy there. Well, that's giving you some cool indentations with your... Good. I feel like I want something to go from here. So I like that. And that's going to give us our cracks, and I think that's going to be pretty cool. So now... And I already have a plan for this. So normally what I do is if I'm going to um, partition off a section, I'll typically do a third. But I already knew what my design was going to be, so um, I made a different decision this time based on that. And I've just got to figure out, I'm going to stamp in this section right here, and then I am using this to go up in that section right there. So that's going to go there and my china, you know what I like? I might be, I just love, I actually think I am going to use this. I just love the wispy part of this. So what I'm going to do is I want to figure out, I don't have it perfectly lined up, it's off a little bit, but you can see like if I use this section, how much more wispier it is than if I like use that section right there. And I love the wispies. 
So I'm going to use it just like this. So my plan is I am using China Blue ink. I did not get it adjusted perfectly. Um, I am going to, because I know how I want it, I'm going to tape it off just as a guideline so I get it back in the same spot so I don't have to think about it again. So I'll just make a corner right there and then I know how to line that up. Go up just a tad bit further here. There we go. So it's not for inking purposes, it's for placement after I get it inked. So I know that Pam just filled this, but I'm gonna make sure that I have enough ink on there. These little ink bottles will last you forever. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna ink this. I'm gonna set that aside because I don't want to get ink on my surface. So I just want to make sure that this is inked well. And we'll see what happens. I did play, but it wasn't quite as inked as this is going to be. Put this back and then put this back. I don't know if I've got it the exact same way, you guys. But this is where it's going, right there. Now, I do want the ink to get into those cracks. That's the only thing I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. I'm going for that Wedgwood blue color. Oh, it looks good. And it doesn't matter how long you hold it down. I'm just procrastinating. And once you take it off, that, that's it. I mean, you're, you know, you're done. That's, there's no um, going over it. So you're better off living with it than trying to stamp over it. So I'm just gonna wipe this off. So I want it to be like a watercolory look. Um, this part makes me nervous. So I'm just taking a container of water and I'm going to get it to run a little bit. I'm not really planning exactly where I want it, but I just don't want it to be a perfect impression. And I'm offloading my brush a little bit. The ink takes um, a little while to dry, so you don't necessarily have to rush with this step. And to me, this is pretty perfectly imperfect. Um, I am reactivating the DIY, DIY paint underneath. Um, I think that's working for me in this case. That's something that, you know, you might want to think about moving forward if I were to do this again. You know, what if, what if I sealed it? And I don't want it to be the same everywhere. One of the other things you can do, and I, I want to be careful with this because I don't, I'm loving this and I don't want to ruin it. You can take and work right out of your ink pad and you can feather in like a little bit of a deeper color if you want it in a couple of spots. You can just work right off your ink pad. And that'll 
make it just a little bit darker in some spots, which is really fun. So now I'm going to let that dry and I want to put in, so this is the Lay Roses. This was lost for the longest time and Pam and I found it under one of our work tables. Um, that's just not going to cover enough for me. So that's why I decided to use this one. Now it's going to be a little bit tight um, because my backing is longer. So I am going to peel this off of here so that I can fit it in better. Um, I do not like things to be centered. So I'm going to ship that off to the side and I am going to use black ink. I am using the matte spray sealer because if I use a water-based sealer, this could smear more, especially because it takes ink longer to dry. I don't want that kind of smearing. I have an intentional smear. I just wanted to smooth that out just a little bit. Let me try that. Rust-Oleum Matte Sealer is a staple for me. And this is all going to get antiqued, you guys. So now I'm able to use Big Top over this without I may not like it. If I don't like it, I'll wipe it off. So I've got my black velvet paint and I'm just going to, and black velvet is the same black that I used everywhere else. I do really, I like the black braiding a lot. So I'm gonna hit it with some sealer so that I can age it. So I'm starting with dark and decrepit and I am going to do black glaze last this way. Test a little corner first. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool I think. And then I will add So I'm looking on camera, there we go, and it's, it's pretty intense, so I'm going to have to wipe back more quickly. So I'm going to do this section, and I do want it to stay in the cracks, and I'm going to wipe back. 
So we should see those cracks that I put in last week being accentuated. Now, this part. I definitely want to get it into those cracked areas. I may go back in with a thinner brush. To really get those in there. Oh, it looks, oh, God, I really do love this. And then the more I wipe, the more I'll get down to the actual colors, but I do like how it's sitting in those recesses. I, I like that. I like that a lot. So let's try, let's try the top here. And then I'm gonna do the black all at once. And I want to get it in those low points. Kind of work on the edges so that it's a little more age looking. On the edges. Trying to wipe back a little bit of that roping. I just don't. So one of the things that I want to look at is like right in here, how cool this is. Hi mom. See that? How cool that is? I really like that and I kind of want to mimic that a little bit on the edge in that crevice there. So I'm not I'm not wiping as hard. Um, the other thing I could do is take a liner brush and I could really get it in where I have cracks or imperfections. So like right here, I don't really have any in the middle. So I'm just gonna take my liner brush and then wipe it. That looks, it looks so cool. And I don't know if I can go out and go back in. So I'm just, around that edge, making it more aged. All right, I do want to use black clays. I just um, taking a clean baby wipe, because now that I'm back, I can see a little bit of perspective. Cleaning that up just a little bit. Wiping some of that back. 
So now I'm going to use black clays just to cool it off just a tad. I've got dark and decrepit on my brush still. I'm just wiping that off. So I'm going to have a mixture of both. And I'm just going to go on the edge. So this is Paint Couture Black Chiffon. And it is my favorite black glaze ever. It's going to it's going to cool it off. It's like a um, less intense black glaze. So it doesn't just like overpower your project. But it, it is going to it's going to cool it off just a tad. Just around, actually I'm going to do that whole part up there. And I really like the look that that gives. Look at that, how cool that looks. Um, I need to hit the sides because they're a little dark. So this is black chiffon. I really do love Paint Couture products. They're pretty incredible. Okay, so I just want to wipe that edge. Still needs to be sealed, but I really do love this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carol. That is Rose 12 for you, but the cracks, I can't believe, like, surpassed my expectations for those. Look at them. Aren't they cool? I like the black rope. 